What's up, YouTubers? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. In today's video, we'll check out some tips that can help you ultimately get a better understanding of theory when it comes to the fretboard. So let's go. So when it comes to theory and specifically involving it on the guitar fretboard, I often get asked, where do I begin? And usually the answer is always the same. Fundamentals. It all starts with fundamentals, right? Topics that I'm sure you watching already know, but maybe haven't put that extra effort into really diving in and learning. So today's video is all about that. Fundamentals, right? We'll look over some topics that when you really practice them and have a really great understanding, will ultimately lead you to having more freedom on the fretboard, right? And theory is really like taking English class in school, right? We already know how to speak English, right? But what English class does is it gives you the tools to make sense while you're speaking with punctuation and all that fun stuff, right? Theory is the exact same thing. Right, It's giving you these tools or these outlines to give you a better understanding on what's happening on the fretboard. Right, Ultimately, applying theory, practice, and applying it to the styles of music that you play, that will ultimately lead you, along with practicing, to being the best player that you can be in that type of genre. So, with all that being said, let's dive into today's video. So the first topic I want to talk about which again, I know that we've heard all this before, but maybe haven't put enough time and effort to have it really ingrained in our system. And that is having a really good understanding of all the notes on the fingerboard, right? That'll open up so many possibilities as you'll see later in the video knowing the notes on your fingerboard is crucial and knowing them really well. So for example, if I play this second fret of the B string, knowing that is a C sharp, playing five of the G string, knowing that's a C, playing, let's say, six of the low E, B flat. Let's say playing um, 11 of the B string, B flat as well. A, E, C sharp, G sharp, let's do um, 16 of D, F sharp, right? A, D, A, F sharp. It's a pretty simple task, but it does take time and effort like everything, right? Just putting in maybe five minutes a day to really understand, not memorize, really understand the notes on the fingerboard, right? You have to, I guess, distinguish that memorizing is learning it fast for a test tomorrow, which is cool, right? But do you have a grasp on all the notes on the fingerboard that you can know off the top of your head, playing um, 16 of high E, that's a G sharp, you know? Learning the notes on the fingerboard is crucial. Let's check out topic number two. So the next topic I wanna focus on is again, a very simple fundamental idea. And that is you having a really good grasp with your major scale, as well as the five positions of the major scale. So let's say we're, we're in the key of G major.
already there, our knowledge of the fretboard opens up. And like the previous topic, understanding all the notes on the fretboard, to take your major scale knowledge to the next level, I highly encourage you to learn your key signatures, meaning how many sharps or flats are in a specific key, right? So like we just played in G major, we know that we have one sharp, F sharp. Let's say we're in the key of A major now. We have three sharps, C sharp, F sharp, and G sharp. Let's say we're in the key of D major, right? We have two sharps, F sharp, C sharp, back to our root. Combine your knowledge of all the fretboard notes as well as understanding if you're in the key of G, you only have one sharp, apply it to the fingerboard and you essentially have the whole fingerboard at your disposal, right? <laughs> Let's check out topic number three. So the third topic, I really want you guys to have a good grasp on. And this one comes with a lot of practicing and a lot of like microscoping the guitar and seeing where stuff goes. And that is your triads, your three note chords. And ideally, you would have an equal amount of knowledge and confidence with major triads, let's do in the key of G, major triads, minor triads, diminished, and lastly, augmented. In a perfect world, you would be able to play those triads across the fingerboard and up and down the fingerboard, right? Bonus points is when you really understand what makes these chords, right? Again, we want to get out of this pathway of memorizing just to know it. You really want to have a grasp of when it's a major triad, it's root third fifth minor root flat three five diminished root flat three flat five and augmented root three sharp five ideally also in whatever key you're in you know what those notes are right in the key of g gbd is a major triad right if we apply to the fretboard gbd this would be a G major triad in first inversion. Minor, G, B flat, D. B flat, D, G. Minor triad. Augmented, three, sharp five, root. B, D sharp, G. Diminished. Flat three, flat five, root. Right? These small steps in really every key will grant you the ability for the next step, which is taking songs and seeing where are all the places you can play them on the fretboard. So let's go to that next topic now. Hey guys editing the video right now, but I wanted to add one more thing to add when it comes to practicing your triads. So when practicing these triads, it's also important to apply them to the diatonic chords to whatever key you're in. And like today's video, or mostly in the key of G major, it would look something like this. G major, A minor, 
B minor, C major, D major, E minor, F sharp diminished, back to G. Then you would move to the next string sets, right? Strings two, three, four. G major, A minor, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Right? And you would also move it, let's say, over here. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. And not everything has to be in, how you say, like, root position. These are all voice leading, essentially, approaching these chords with the minimal movement. So the last topic I want to talk about is applying the triads that we just talked about in real world scenarios, right? Songs, whether it's just playing a one, four, five progression. Right? Whether it's the riff to Shot in the Dark by John Mayer. You could do it there, you can do it. You can do it also. Right? Pick any song that you want and see all the places you can apply the chord progression. Some of them may work, others may not, right? But the, your ability to have that knowledge of where all these chords can be played will vastly improve your fretboard knowledge when it comes to chord progressions. Well, all right, guys, that is today's video on how you can improve your theory when it comes to the guitar. And as you saw, none of these topics were rocket science, all fundamentals, right? All basic starting points that when practiced thoroughly, right, every day, a small amount will ultimately lead you to becoming a better guitar player and ultimately the best guitar player that you can be on the instrument. So. With all that being said, if you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.